7 all. No. All right. So um, we will move forward to the remotely piloted aircraft drive policy, which has been through also some, some changes, but I think that's all. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's been through a, um, Long a good process. Do you want, I, I don't know whether anyone's got any questions. I think we're all good to go. Oh, Yanni. Um, come forward. Yeah. Yanni? Yeah, thanks. Um, so at the committee we asked for some additional advice. Um, is it possible just to scroll down a little bit? So there were some areas, there was an area in particular, Furimed Wetlands, which I just wanted to add as a permission required area. Um, it wasn't resolved at the committee. We asked staff to report back on it. Staff have sent a memo round. Um, so I just wondered if you wanted to maybe elaborate the response you got or whether you're, you're still supportive of just making an inclusion. And I'd, if so, I'd like to move an amendment. Yes, we did. We talked to the park staff. They were supportive of the um, Fury Mead wetlands being added into the permission required sites. So can we just edit our council property at, what, how, how would we describe it? Fairy Mead wetlands. Fairy Mead wetland. Wetlands? Feral? Feral? Uh, wetland. 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 It is wetland. Right. And, um, sorry. Yep. May I also ask, sorry, but I'm just wondering, could I ask whether we could have a, a third resolution around the, if you do decide to adopt the policy, could it be adopted from the 1st of August? Oh. To allow, to allow um, comms and web, the web page to be updated. Yep, no, that's fine. Um, so are people just happy to accept that amendment? Yeah, with effect from the 1st yep. of August 2016. Robust about yep, is that all right? Yes, thank yep. you. Andrew. Thank you. Um, there was a question around, and probably referring to the Banks Peninsula map is, is the best place to deal with this. Um, attachment C on page 267. <coughs> um, Onawe and Wairua were two areas that um, are not in blue or having the blue line around them. Um, there's a, a road runs obviously along the side of Wairua on the one side. Um, Onawe would be a site of cultural significance. Are they areas which, in the same vein as, as Councillor Johansson's amendment, should be considered for exclusion as well? Oh, yeah, good call. I did check in Awe as well, of course, because after the um, Strategy and Finance Committee meeting, and of course, I realised the reason why I hadn't, we hadn't included in the first place is Onawe's dock, Department of Conservation Managed Land, so we are only able to give permission or not, I mean, over our own, over council property. So Onawe would be outside yes, of our jurisdiction, yes. so we can't. Um, we and Wairua was the other one. Well, Wairua, I'm sorry, I didn't follow, I didn't pick up on that one at the committee. My understanding is that when we do drew the <coughs> maps around the, count, the coastal boundary, <coughs> that was all our legal, we included all the legal coastal road in that. Yep. And the road along the side of Wairo would be state highway rather than council road. Yes, so that you. again would preclude that, would it? Yeah. All right, thank you. Very good. Um, Bill, uh, um, Ali. I just want some clarification clear um, and the difference between what the, the committee decided and the staff recommendation, and particularly in relation to C, which was um, the committee decided against. So. If C there, about four k's from the airport and Christchurch Hospital, Hill Hospital, and the other heli ports, if in fact that's mm. omitted, as per the the council, the, sorry, the committee resolution, is the potential for that to cause some confusion, because then there's a difference then with the civil a aviation authority rules. I don't believe it'll create confusion. The, C the CAA rules are quite clear that if you're flying in controlled airspace, which most of that area obviously is, then you either fly shielded or you ask for permission from, from the aerodrome operator. Or so the air so traffic in terms control. of the areas that you can fly and can't fly, uh, is the, are the civil aviation ones 
different in some ways from what councils will be? No, we, all we're doing with our work, with the council policy, it's just saying these are the areas in which you, you may fly without asking us, yep. um, or if you're over one and a half kilograms, you do have to ask in case by case. But CAA, they don't specify like in, in, in that sense. All they do is they put that big broad swathe across most of the town and they say this is controlled airspace because of the airports in the area. Um, yeah, so for, for them it's just a matter of saying you fly shielded in that area or you ask. Thank you. So sh shielded being below Under tree, the tree, tree height. Yeah. Thank you. More buildings. Ali. Um, I just had a question on page uh, 258 when hobby groups and commercial users were consulted. The things they were mainly concerned about, understandably, were issues around um, low cost, uh, the approval regime and it being a reasonably user-friendly system. This feels very bureaucratic mm. and another layer of time and effort and energy. Was any consideration given to making CAA a one-stop shop essentially so that, because at the moment drone, people who want to fly a drone ring CAA. We're actually legally obliged to do this, so. Yeah, but was there any way that you it's could. It's the government's decision. No, 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 just let me finish. Um, if you've got a policy in hmm. place, why could you not have the policy in place as per the legal requirement, but enable people to use CAA to actually gain the approval to fly over these areas? I mean, it's. Go to CAA. Beg your pardon? They don't go to CAA, they go to the airport operator. I think so. Yeah. Well, my understanding is they get permission from CAA. Yeah, I don't know CAA. They run the website. No, and, and uh, f f in the sense of this, this policy, so this policy is just saying that, you know. CAA rules, the new rules say that you must ask an RPAS or drones operator must ask for permission to fly over someone else's property. So this this policy simply enables the council to say which properties it will or won't give permission to under what circumstances. So it, it, it outlays the um, us giving permission, the council giving permission to people to use it. Um, once we've done that, they can fly provided they how they fly their drone is they must adhere to CAA rules. Oh, no, no, I understand that, I understand that. It just seems that, so now drone people have got to ring up here, get permission from here, then ring the oh, CAA. No, 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 well, no, that's the whole point, yeah, is that sure. we've written this specifically so they don't have to do both. 70, at least 70 That's why we left out the within four kilometres of the Christchurch International Airport. They've got to, they've, they've got to do that, but it's over our land, we've got to have oh, rules I in place. I thought if they were over 1.5 kilos and so forth, they had to... Yeah, but no, 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 that's what we're putting in place, right, the 1.5. Okay. Okay. The original draft had a lower level, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it had one kilogram, but yeah. we took the, um, you know, the retailers are saying, if you make it 1.5, you'll capture about 70% of all the operators anyway, right. so they're all going to be able to go out on the morning they decide <coughs> to fly. So from a hobbyist perspective, <coughs> this is a better... Right, okay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 All right, would someone like to move the adoption of this? Yanni and Raf. Right. Just wanted to speak to it yep. very quickly. Um, I think it's um, just <coughs> the reason that I'm supporting the revised committee recommendation um, versus the staff recommendation is I'm really mindful of what happened with Freedom Camping when we limited an area to such a small area within our city. Actually, what we saw was a concentration of the problem and the nuisance, and I think this is actually. Um, a good way forward in terms of the starting point but I am hopeful that we can have a review in a certain period of time so if there are any issues that are being raised that we've got a process to record it and also to feed in to the development of the strategy but I think the starting point is that we shouldn't be overly restrictive to start with given that we haven't had a lot of complaints around the nuisance um, and if you looked at the map that was proposed originally Again, it only had a very few areas where people could have done it without getting the permission of council. So I think this is a good starting point and I appreciate that we've tried to protect some of the more sensitive ecological areas within the city. I think that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, fundamentally I think the last thing we want to do is create another layer of bureaucracy that means it's difficult to enforce, but it's huge, huge strain on our resources. Um, if there's not a significant problem and I don't think there's been any advice or evidence that we've had that there is a significant problem but accepting this is an emerging technology and that as 
things develop, we may be in a different situation as we go forward. But I fundamentally support the pragmatic approach that the committee has agreed to, which is to have less restrictions now, um, and so that we can disperse it across a wider area of the city rather than concentrate it in a, in a few. That's good. Okay, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you. Thanks, Claire. <coughs> um,